listen to me. It's a scam. They're trying to steal your money. Oh my God, are you serious? The call center is uh, there for one reason and one reason only, that is to scam. Were you just on the phone with the Canada Revenue Agency? Yes, but I don't know what to do. They don't care about what the customer is going through. You are paid to get the money, that is it. Empty out the bank account and leave it zero. Uh, how much were they trying to get out of you? Like 96,000 and saying that I was going to go to jail? When somebody cries on the phone, they will mute the microphone and they will have a little laugh between the person that's sitting next to them. No one feels sorry for nobody because they're interested in the money and the money only. There are scammers who I think are, are, are terrible people and who are greedy, but there are other people who really do have a conscience. Some scammers are even willing to share secrets and expose their co-workers. That's the number, save her, save her. This woman is saying that she's got 60,000 dollars in the bank and they're gonna take every single last dollar of it. My name is Ben Taylor and I have a YouTube channel called Pleasant Green where I look into scams. Scam baiting is where you go looking for scams. You try to find the scammers and you try to lead them along. Typically you're trying to waste the scammers time so that they don't have the opportunity to go scam somebody else. There's a big kind of a movement on YouTube of scam baiters and people who try to get back at scammers and uh, I guess I am considered one of them. My name is Casey. I used to be a scammer, but now I work in the same call center as Undercover to save people from being scammed. Casey was one of the scammers who uh, watched my YouTube channel pretty regularly and he reached out to me and he said, guess what? I am actually a scammer in India and I'd be willing to talk to you and I'd be willing to share kind of what I know. It's the right thing to do. You can't do this. This is wrong, you know? You can't take somebody else's money and go buy a BMW. I, I asked him for proof. I, I said, show me what you do. Show me what your call center looks like. He began to send me pictures of his call center. He began to uh, share with me the scripts that, he, that him and his coworkers would read. I got to listen in on conversations. There's a case being filed against you because you've chose to ignore the letters that were sent out to you. I got to actually call up the call center and talk to these scammers myself, kind of just understand how they operated. And then he began to actually send me the contact information of people who were in the process of being scammed. He would be sitting at his desk on his computer taking calls and he would probably listen in to a coworker who was sitting next to him. And if this was somebody who was very vulnerable, perhaps it was a, a, a young mother or maybe it was an elderly woman, if it was someone who was about to get scammed for a significant amount of money, that's when he would step in. Whether it would be him listening in to get the phone number or looking over at the computer to get that number, he would then take it and he would take a bathroom break and he would send me a text message or a voice message telling me that someone was about to get scammed and they needed help immediately. So then me or one of my partners could jump in and make the call and warn them before it was too late. Get ready, I'm sending you a number now. This woman's got too much money. They're gonna take every single penny off us, so get ready. Hello? Hey, I'm hoping you just hung up on those Revenue Canada scammers, did you? Oh my God, are you serious? Please tell me you didn't give them any money. No, I didn't. I'm an investigator. Oh my God, you're my hero. No, I did not give them money. I bitched and whined the entire time. And saying that I was going to go to jail and I have a baby. I was like freaking out. Honey, listen, it's not going to happen. You're not going to jail. None of that is all a scam. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's not okay. You're not going to jail. It's a scam and we stopped it. One of the repercussions of what I do is that I've been run over and I've been kidnapped twice. I've been left on the side of, uh, of a road in the middle of nowhere. They knew it was me because of my unique accent because the recording was available online. Everybody knows it's me. Oh my God, you just don't know what the fuck has happened. This guy got me fucking kidnapped. It shows that it could be life or death, you know? It just takes one person. Minimum is normally 20 to 30 people in one call centre, in one building. The kind of people that work in these call centres, they come from well-educated backgrounds. Some of these people are qualified engineers. Because remember, in India, not everybody speaks English. So the time that you are speaking English, you are very well-educated. 
some days you can go empty handed. There is some days where you don't make anything, but then there is some days where you can make $180,000 or 180,000 pounds. Criminals pretending to be IRS agents asking you to send them money. The call is regarding to your social security number. We found some fraudulent activities under your name. There are a lot of scams out there and they, they really vary. Quite frequently, there are telephone scams who claim to be Amazon employees or IRS employees who say that you're behind on your taxes or that you qualify for some refund from Amazon. If you press one, an agent will ask for the credit card number attached to the account. Don't do it. It's all a scam. It's the same scripts that are going on from every call center. The only thing that changes is the department. If it was a UK one, it would be like the National Crime Agency or the police are after you. If it was an American one, it would be Social Security Administration or it will be the sheriff's department is after you. It's just these kind of small little things change. They will log into your computer, they will take control of it, they will have you access your bank account and they can wire thousands of dollars from your account to their account. If you're vulnerable and if you're not educated, then you can certainly fall for one of these scams and it can be pretty devastating. Once money leaves its country, there's no jurisdiction that our law enforcement can have to go track down that money. It's, it's gone. Anyone can be scammed, it just depends on the circumstances of what you are going through on that day. Anyone can be vulnerable, anyone can be scammed. I'm not going to stop exposing scams because I know that I help more people. I'm not going to shut down my YouTube channel because this guy wants to continue to rip people off. That's never going to happen. I will do my best to stop someone from being scammed. Obviously I can't stop everybody because I'm one person, but I will try my best.